Okay, everyone, so we are continuing with our look at uh, chapter five. Um, looking today, this lesson is actually all about um, the different ways of showing enthalpy change in a process. Um, so we've actually already seen pretty much all of these um, in the lessons before this. This is just kind of a summary of like, what are the ways that you can represent enthalpy and essentially, how can we use that information for um, um, understanding the process that you're looking at, whether it's a thermochemical equation or a potential energy diagram? So um, there are four ways in total. So we're going to look at each of the four ways, and there's a little bit, uh, a few small things that we're going to practice along the way. Okay, so the first method is to write a thermochemical equation with the energy term as part of the reaction. So as you can see here, we've seen this um, before, but if you have an endothermic reaction, that means that the energy should be written on the reactant side. If you have an exothermic process, that means the energy is written on the product side. So it, remember, it doesn't matter where it is on the reactant or product side. So I could have had the 285.8 kilojoules plus water, it means the same thing. If energy is a requirement, so meaning it has to be absorbed from the surroundings, it should be written on the left side of the equation. If energy is released as a product, so meaning it is um, going into the surroundings, it should be on the right-hand side of the equation. It does not matter where. Okay, so, uh, and of course, the number is dependent on whatever you are writing out. So, meaning um, this value is representative for, oh, I just realized this should actually have um, a half in front of it. My apologies, I can fix that. Um, so, when you're looking at this, right, the number that is written there is representative of the equation that it is a part of. Okay, so um, if you'd like to pause the video now and give this question a try, you can. So essentially what you're doing is you're going to write a thermochemical equation, right? So it means you're going to put the energy term in the reaction itself to represent the exothermic process. So meaning energy is released from the system that occurs when two moles of butane burn in oxygen. So essentially we have a combustion reaction happening here. The molar enthalpy of combustion for butane is negative 2871 kilojoules per mole, right? But be mindful that we have two moles of it that are burning. So pause the video, give this one a try, and let's see how you do. Okay, so first of all, um, because we're going to be representing two moles of butane, we should probably first determine the delta H of that, All right? So the delta H is the molar enthalpy multiplied by how many moles are actually going to be reacting. So in this case, we have two moles times the negative 2871 kilojoules per mole, All right? So our mole value cancels. So here we have negative 5742 kilojoules, right, for two moles. So the next thing is we have to write out the balance equation. So remember that we are balancing it, but we need a coefficient of two in front of our butane. So here is our butane, and butane is a gas. Okay, let's go about that. So we have butane, which is a gas. We have oxygen, right? And this is complete combustion, which means we're gonna have water, vapor and we are going to have carbon dioxide right so we want two moles of butane so that means we have to balance this equation with keeping that in mind of course so looking at that you're going to have a 10 in front of our water okay. right, so we have 20 so we need 20 hydrogens and then we're going to need an eight for our eight carbons and then, of course, so this guy is going to be 13 oxygens. Now, we're missing the value, which was the whole point. So let's add that in. So because this is an exothermic reaction, 
it should be on the product side. Okay, so keep in mind, you're not putting the negative symbol. The negative symbol tells you that this is exothermic, but where it is written in this balanced chemical equation is what's gonna tell you if it's exothermic or not. So you have two moles of butane reacting with 13 moles of oxygen, producing 10 moles of water, eight moles of carbon dioxide gas, and producing 5,742 kilojoules worth of energy. Okay, so be sure you should not be putting in that negative symbol there. By having it on the product side, you are saying that it is a product, which indicates that this is exothermic. Okay, so if this had said that uh, three moles were reacting or one mole was reacting, right, you would balance this accordingly. And that goes with the last lesson that we had looked at. You can adjust this equation depending on what number you're trying to represent for that particular scenario, okay? Now, keep in mind, this is because we are writing out the equation. If we just had to calculate the energy, this would have been it right here, but it wants us to write out the thermal chemical equation, which means putting the energy value in the process itself, just like we saw in these two examples, okay? So the second way of representing um, an equation is actually just writing out the balanced chemical equation. And again, this needs a half in front of it there. Um, so writing out the chemical equation, and then instead of having it inside the reaction, so on the reactant or product side, the delta H value is simply written to the side. Okay, so it's a thermochemical equation with the delta H values, whereas this was a thermochemical equation with the energy terms in the reaction itself. So over here, it's the same reaction, but instead of having it written on the reactant side, here we would just simply write down what the energy value happens to be, which is 285.8 kilojoules. So now, if it is endothermic, you should not have the negative, of course, but if it is exothermic, you should be representing that as well here. So now, because it's not written in the equation, it's written to the side, you do need to have the negative symbol if it is in fact exothermic, okay? And I'd like you to notice also, just for this one too, that remember that this value that's given for a delta H of a reaction can be considered to be the molar enthalpy for everything that has a one in front of it. So this, I'll just use this magnesium reaction for my example, um, 601.8 kilojoules is released for every one mole of magnesium, or we can look at it as for every one mole of magnesium oxide produced, right? So everything that has a one technically can also be considered the molar enthalpy value, okay? So Let's take a look at this next one, and then you can pause the video to give this a try. So we have sulfur dioxide and oxygen reacting to form sulfur trioxide. The molar enthalpy for the combustion of sulfur trioxide uh, in this reaction is this. So for every mole of SO2 reacting, we have this much energy release. What is the enthalpy change for this particular reaction? Okay, so... What I'd like you to do for this one here is write out the thermochemical equation with the delta H value on the side, just like it would be up here, and of course using this information to help you. All right, so give this one a try. Okay, so something like this that is not being specific. So for example, do you notice how it just asks you for the enthalpy change? Okay, it's not asking for an enthalpy change for a specific number of moles for this reaction. There's actually a few ways that you can go about doing this. Okay, so first of all, let's write the reaction out. So just a reminder, and, I, and you've probably learned this, um, if you were in my class, you did learn this last year in grade 11, but any sulfur oxide um, or nitrogen oxide or carbon oxide um, compound, are always gaseous, okay, at room temperature. So sulfur dioxide, oxygen, and sulfur trioxide, these are actually all gases. So we have uh, SO2, 
which is a gas, reacting with oxygen, which is a gas, it is reacting to form uh, SO3, which is a gas. Okay, so I'm actually kind of jumped the gun here, but um, I'll explain what I'm, let me, let me talk about this before we do that. Okay, so right here, right, we're going to look at the molar enthalpy for the combustion of sulfur dioxide, which is this. So meaning, for every one mole of SO2, this is the energy release. So you could actually leave this reaction as is and balance it as if there is a number one here. So really, the only thing we'd have to do is we'd have to make this oxygen into a half. And the delta H for this, the enthalpy change for this reaction that we're just showing here is negative 98.9 kilojoules, right? Because we're showing one mole of SO2 that is reacting. So this would be correct, right? So this number, this value represents this reaction, okay? If we wanted to balance this value with whole numbers, so meaning let's say we now had for some reason, the two that never comes out nice. SO2 gas plus oxygen gas making two SO3 gas. That's a three. Okay, so if I decide to balance the reaction without using the fractions and keeping them whole numbers, the delta H must represent what I'm showing here. So in that case, I don't have one mole of SO2 reacting. I have two moles of SO2 reacting. So that means my delta H here that I'm going to be showing has to be double what it is for when it's one mole. So if we take 98.9 and multiply it by 2, we get negative 198 kilojoules. Right? So this first option is correct, and this second option is correct. The reason why both of these would be accepted is because it does not say what the enthalpy change is for. Whereas the, you know, let's say if it said, what is the enthalpy change for two moles worth of SO2? You would have to do obviously this one. Um, but whenever you have a way of balancing it with either whole numbers or, uh, or fractions, if the question is not specific, both of those would be acceptable. Okay, the biggest error I see here is not adjusting for the delta H that you are um, showing in that particular reaction.